addresses and you should get an identical graph that will also show you which client that is as you can see right here this is 192.168.1.20 which is this machine but there's also other clients so if you want to know who is accessing the internet the most and which websites they're spending most of the time and if they're using too much bandwidth you can classify by bytes here you also see that that will also correlate to the previous two graphs and on how much uh, traffic is going to this client so as you can see with this many bytes going to one client correlated to the client IP address hello and welcome back to IT security labs and in this video I'm going to show you how to extract our data from squid proxy logs into fields and actually end up sending into Grafana so by the end of this video you should be able to create view that you, uh, this graph that you can see right here from this data as you can see these are our squid proxy logs that we are getting into gray logs I did show you how to get these logs all the way from our squid proxy that's running from our pfSense all the way into gray log so by now you should have these logs looking like this and if you haven't looked at the previous video this is the first video that i showed you on how to do this so go ahead and check out my channel or now you can set up your squid proxy to send logs to gray log it should work for either pfSense or any other systems it's just the same process really so once you have your logs looking like this in the text as you can see we are just getting straight message text with all the brackets and the data together just text logs we need to be able to break down these logs into different fields like in the cent in, in the left here and once we have different fields that we can actually filter through so if we uncheck the message let's look at maybe the destination IP address or the original destination IP and as you can see this is me accessing my pfSense that's why this is showing up right here I'll be showing you how to break this data into all these fields right now and you should be able to see all these uh, fields of which client is accessing the data how long were they accessing the data which port do they use right now I'm not getting any information on my port but I hope I'll fix that and the destination and I should be able to see the whole message as well after this so how do we do this how do we go from a log that looks like this all the way to graphs like this or in real time like this one I'll be showing you that right now so the first thing you need to do is once you have your logs coming into gray log you you should have seen that in the previous video you want to go to your system then you go to your inputs and what we're going to be using here are what we call grok filters these are like advanced sort of regular expressions but regular expressions on steroids so you probably have your input here what you want to do is say manage extractors because you need to extract data from those inputs and from there just say get started because you probably not have any inputs for squid proxy and you as you can see here you go ahead and load a message from your squid proxy and it will automatically pick a message for you if you don't have a message just go ahead and load the message you will not have these fields here because i already created mine but you have the message you want to choose this one right here this is the raw message and as you can see from this message you can tell this is the date and in the time it will tell you where it came from and we also have the date and time the gateway and this is coming from this facility and all these numbers here and then you have the IP address the status of the connection what type of connection it was whether it was a gate or post the URL right here that you and they're also the original so you want to be able to break this message into all these other fields so that's what we're doing here so you go to right here we said select extractor type you can use all these in I mean depending on which one you're comfortable with right now I'm using the grok pattern so you just choose grok and from here this is where you can play around and decide which fields you want and which on, on your message and I already created a grok pattern for us 
and i mean you can change this however you want but go ahead and copy the grok pattern that i have if you're new to regular expressions and grok patterns and this will get you started i highly suggest that you customize this in a later video i really want to go deep into the grok patterns and how you can actually manipulate them in gray log but for this video so we don't waste a lot of time copy and paste this one and as you can see the first part of our pattern is the best 10 number and this is my tag it's my epoch time then of course um right here i have an integer and this is my du duration in in an integer form so i'll be showing you that in, in a little bit and of course we want ipv4 that's the class and then we name it client you can change this into whatever you want instead of client maybe you can name it uh user or whatever you want here but this is our client address as you can see so copy and paste this regular expression i'm i'll be showing you more about this so once you have your grok filter in here go ahead and um, do a try this example when you do a try this example you should not get an error and it will show you your epoch time and your duration your client ip address your result you can remove this part if you want, but I'm putting it in there as well. Then you can see the, the number of bytes that were sent during that session. And you can see the URL that was accessed by this client. And then the peer status. Usually you will get a status here or the peer host. So this will be a client. Um, this will be the IP address of the peer that was accessed. So the, this in your case might be a public IP address. So once this is done, you can go ahead and say up, update or save extractor and once you save it if you go to your inputs and show received message for that extractor you should now get a message that looks like this it will still look like that but if you go to your left as you can see we now have our bytes so i unchecked the message and now I'm checking the bytes. I want to see the length of the sessions, uh, the client IP address. This is uh, the machine accessing the internet or the web. Uh, you can use the destination port and you should be able to see a different port here if you are accessing the internet. I uh, obviously haven't uh, perfected this one yet, but uh, and that should be the port that you accessed on the internet. Then you should see the duration this will be in seconds and then uh you can also see the method in this case you can see whether it's post or get and you can see all this one as well so the peer host right there right now i'm only accessing one web address which is my pfsense 192.168.5 so that's what you're looking at right there right here so that's how you break down your messages into different uh, fragments. Just like in the previous uh, video where I showed you how to create graphs in Graylog, if you wanted to see a, mess a graph about, say, the method that people are accessing your the internet from your from your site, you can just do quick values, and as you can see, these are the percentages of the get, post, connect, head, options, and all these other uh, options. You can also see the same on the duration, like how long are people spending on these websites. If you do a quick values there, you'll be able to see a uh, classification. And from this, you should be able to see that there's one dominant client, which is uh, doing that. And you should be able to go to your clients, to your client IP addresses, and you should get an identical graph that will also show you which client that is, as you can see right here. This is 192.168.1.20, which is this machine. But there's also other clients. So if you want to know who is accessing the internet the most and which websites they're spending most of the time, and if they're using too much bandwidth, you can classify by bytes here. You also see that that will also correlate to the previous two graphs and on how much uh, traffic is going to this client. So as you can see, with this many bytes going to one client, correlated to the client IP address. So that's how you do it in Graylog. If you want to send the same data to Grafana, 
let's just go ahead and do that right now so if you want to ship this data straight to grafana all you need to do is go ahead and set in your grafana and in your data sources and add our gray log data source if you have not if you don't know anything about grafana on my website and also on my channel i I do have a tutorial on how to set up Grafana in 10 minutes or less. And what Grafana does is Grafana allows you to check out. Grafana allows you to visualize data. Say, for example, you see this one little graph here with all this data. You can actually send it to Grafana and end up with data that looks even better. So if I go to my manage in Grafana, as you can see, these are all my other Grafana dashboards, but let me look for my squid proxy here. Like that. So that's my squid proxy. I, I have a bunch. As you can see, the same this the same data that I was showing you is now showing here. This is uh, squid codes. Come back here to gray log and I can create the same graphs as in Grafana, but it's just better. So I can show you how to create all these Grafana dashboards, but right now I'll show you how to get that data into Grafana. So if you want to create Grafana dashboards, go to my YouTube channel. There's a video that I'll link in the description that will show you how to set up Grafana in 10 minutes or less. Once you set up a Grafana and you're comfortable with Grafana or you want to experiment with it, I also have a full course that I'll link below on how to actually work with Grafana. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create this graph right here so the first thing you need to do is go to configuration data sources i already added my gray log but you want to do say add data source name you can call it whatever you want i can call this uh, gray log because it's most likely going to be gray log or whatever name you want then here you need to choose elastic search I showed you how to set up gray log and also how to uh, configure it with an index. So you can go ahead and uh, choose Elasticsearch. Then from here, put your URL of your gray log. Once you have a URL, uh, this local host, probably in my case, since my uh, gray log is running on 192.168.5.60, I believe, then um, on authentication, depending on whether you allowed authentication or not, I didn't in my case, you can just leave that blank. If you follow my instructions, this should be easy. Then index name, um, depending on what you call your index, in my gray log, as you can see, if I go to my system indices, I do have a squid underscore proxy index. And in addition to that, I also have the default index. But if you don't know, or if you haven't set it up, you can also use a wildcard and do a seven test. So if I look at my gray log here, this is what I have, like I was showing you, and I'm using a wildcard. If you do a seven test, you should see index okay. And what this means is I'm pulling all my indices for my gray log into my Grafana. But of course, if you wanna make it more defined, specify the name here and this is going to be timestamp and that's all that there is and once you have this data once you have all this data coming in the only way you would know is if you do a create dashboard and say graph if you do an edit of this and choose the data source to be gray log you see this now you know your gray log data is coming in then from here, the sky is the limit. You can choose whatever you want. I'm going to share with you my graph that I have, that I've uh, spent some time creating. This is going to be a JSON that you can download straight from Grafana. It's going to be free for you. If you follow my instructions, this will be a good start for you. You can import this and the data will just start flowing into your uh, Grafana. So I'm going to share this with you. In future videos, I'll be showing you in depth on how to create every single part of this. But right now, let me tell you what you'll be importing. This is the total traffic in kilobytes. That's how much traffic is being taken by people visiting websites in your network, checking in WSAS most likely or some uh, other services. 
then this is the time right now this is the top client which is this computer that i'm using so in your environment you would want to know who this person is and if this person is the top client every single day in a production environment you begin to wonder what they are doing at work that's taking more bandwidth than everybody else and if they ask you for a report you might be able to generate it from gray log squid codes these are very helpful especially uh, if you are suffering from a distributed denial of attack you probably want to know and you see these codes change uh, you can also research these and find out what they mean and these are the destination ip addresses as you can see here i'm not going to boil these because they don't really mean much but as you can see and then we can also have our time this is what i just chose to create if you go to the internet and type squid Grafana, there is even better graphs out there. So if I go to images in Mifana Nizo, um, that's my graph. Uh, that's, that's impressive. But there is an, a different graph. I think this one will do. Okay, so Jorge has a graph for Squid Proxy and he also has the same um, a blog post about it. As you can see, he even has his working properly. So there is a lot of options to get inspired on how to get this done. So as you can see, I'm not the only one who has done this. I've actually pulled inspiration from other people. So this is very possible. I'll be showing you more um, about Grafana, if you subscribe, this is my passion. I love data, I like to see data. I like to be able to interpret data. I hate having data that I cannot make sense of. So Grafana and having graphs makes me understand the data instantly. I don't have to look at data and try to think about it. If I look at this graph right now, I know that there was activity on my network until now, then it stopped. It's probably Microsoft updates because I wasn't here. Then. The, there was fairly nothing then from here i was here at home then i left then now i came back and there was this little activity but in a normal network you should be able to see this and make sense of it that's the best thing about this so if you have any questions if you're working on this let me know in the comments below otherwise guys i really appreciate if you can subscribe and like this video if you're also interested go ahead and support me and also um Make sure that uh, on Patreon, you can give me a couple bucks so I can uh, improve on my production quality. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Our next video is going to be on PFSense firewall logs. And just to show you, let me uh, show you what we'll be working on. I'm just doing a uh, search on YouTube. Was The first vi uh, video is going to be my video, of course. I did this last time. This is a video that I created and I, and I promised everybody that I'll be showing you how to do it. And in the next video, you're going to see how to visualize PFSense firewall logs. I'll also share a JSON file with you. So stay tuned. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.